Heavenly Father, Lord, be with us as we go over this sermon, Lord. Be with everyone here, Lord. Be with me and everyone else. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Today we're going to study about mercy. We're going to start off by reading our scripture reading, Luke 6, 36. Say amen when you're there. Be therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Notice how it talks about how merciful of a father we have. Now let's look into some examples to show how merciful of a father we have. But first we're going to look into Matthew 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And then we're going to go to our first example, which is in Matthew 18, verses 23 to 35. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the serf servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. So just that thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto them. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one of your brothers their trespass. The deacons can uh, pass out the... Oh, you already did? Then we're going to go on to our first reference, which is Christ's Object Lessons, 247, first paragraph. In the parable, the Lord summoned the unmerciful debtor, and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt, because thou desirest me, shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due to him. So likewise, said Jesus, shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses, he refu who refuses to forgive is thereby casting away his own hope of pardon. If we expect mercy from God, we also sh should be merciful to, the other p to other people, just as the king was merciful to the servant who owed him money. And, and for save the servant's debt, and forgave the servant's debt, but unlike what the king did, for the servant, the servant didn't forgive his fellow servants, his fellow servant debt, and because of that, he was cast into prison. So if we expect mercy, we also should be merciful. Now let's go into our second example, which is in Genesis 3, verses 1 to 6 and 23 to 24.
Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now we're going to go down to verse 21. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them? And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So what happens is Eve is tempted to eat the fruit and gets Adam to eat it according to her. Then we're going to go to Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then we're going to go to 1 John 3, verse 4. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now let's go to our reference in Patriarchs and Prophets, chapter 6, page 82. For nearly a thousand years Adam lived among men, a witness to the result of sin. Faithfully he sought to stem the tide of evil. He had been commanded to instruct his posterity in the way of the Lord, and he carefully treasured what God had revealed to him and repeated it to succeeding generations. To his children and his children's children, to the ninth generation, he described man's holy and happy estate in paradise, and repeated the history of his fall, telling them of the suffering by which God had taught him the necessity of strict adherence to his law, and explained to them the merciful provisions for their salvation. Yet there were but few who gave heed to his words. Often he was met with bitter reproaches for the sin that he had brought such woe upon his prosperity. Adam's life was one of sorrow, humility, and contrition. When he had left Eden, the thought that he must die filled him with horror. He was first made, ac he was first made acquainted with the reality of death in the human family when Cain, his firstborn son, became the murderer of his brother. Filled with the keenest remorse for his own sin, doubly bereaved in the death of Abel, and the rejection of Cain. Adam was bowed down with anguish. He witnessed the widespread corruption that was finally to cause the destruction of the world by a flood. And though the sentence of death pronounced upon by his maker had fir at first appeared terrible, yet after beholding for nearly a thousand years the results of sin, he felt that it was merciful in God to bring an, to an end of life in suffering and sorrow. Notice how it talks about how God not allowing them to eat the fruit is an act of mercy itself. Because allowing them to eat of the tree of life, sin would exist forever. In a way, death puts a check on evil and prevents sin from ruining everything. And we go to our last reference, Patriarchs and Prophets, chapter 4, page 63. Here's, the broken law of God demanded the life of the sinner, and all the universe there was but one 
who could, in behalf of man, satisfy its claims. Since the divine law is as sacred as God himself, only one equal with God could make atonement for its transgression. None but Christ could redeem fallen man from the curse of the law and bring him again into harmony with heaven. Christ would take upon himself the guilt and shame of sin, sin so offensive to a holy God that he must separate the Father and his Son. Christ would reach to the depths of misery to rescue the ruined race. Before the Father, he pleaded in the sinner's behalf, while the host of heaven awaited the result with an intensity of interest that words cannot express. Long continued was the mysterious communion, the council of peace the, for the fallen sons of men. The plan of salvation had been laid before the creation of the earth. For Christ is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Yet it was a struggle, even with the king of the universe, to yield up his son to die for the guilty, for his begotten soul of the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now what were the two commandments even Adam broke. Go to Exodus 20 verses 3 and 14. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And when we go down to verse 14, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Because Adam and Eve sinned, Christ had to sacrifice his life by doing so. Christ gave us a second chance to redeem ourselves with God's help. Now we're going to go to our next example in Matthew 9 verse 2. Say amen when you're there. And he had entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. This is an act of mercy because not only did Jesus heal him, but he also forgave his sins. And let's go to down to verse 27 for our next example. Say amen when you're there. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes saying, According to your faith, it will be unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know of it. The story of the blind men is an example of mercy because Jesus restored the two men's sight. Now we're going to do two more examples together. So the first one's going to be Matthew 15, verses 22 to 28. And the next one's going to be Matthew 17, verses 15 to 18. Say amen when you're there. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole that very hour. Now let's go to Matthew 17, verses 15 to 18. Say amen when you're there. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus said 
answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured that very hour. In both stories shown, shown it's an act of mercy because healing in a way is mercy. Jesus cast out the devils that were in the little girl at the request, the request of the mother and cast out the, the demons in the, of the little boy, from the little boy. So now we're going to go to our next example, Mark 2, verses 1 to 12. Say amen when you're there. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days. It was noise that he was in the house, and straightway oh, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one not so sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh, unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there was certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned with themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, And take up thy bed and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go, into thine house, into thine house, and immediately he rose, arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, "We saw it never in this fashion." Notice how mercy isn't always isn't always pardoning a person's sin or giving a person a second chance, but instead, mercy can also be healing a person, and also casting out devils. Let's go to our next example in Genesis 21, 1 to 19. Say amen when you're there. And the Lord visited Sarah, and he said, And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. And, it, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son to his old age at the said time which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom bare to him Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Jonah was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah would should have given children suck, for I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. The thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman, and all that Sarah hath said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac that 
shall thy seed be fulfilled. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham was, rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder. And the child sent her away, and she departed, and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of her shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bowshot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What alieth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and I hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her, eye, and God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. Even though Ishmael mocked Isaac, the Lord was still merciful to save him. And also how the angel comforting his mother is, is also an act of mercy. And let's go to our last example. First, we're going to be going to Jonah 1, verse 1 to 15, and then 17. Say amen when you're there. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. And Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down in the side of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, and so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. And they said, Every one to his fellow come, and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou, and what is thy country, and of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said unto him, What shall we do unto thee? that the sea might be calm unto us, for the sea wrought and was temptuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the seas, so shall the sea be calm unto you, for I know that for my sake this great temp tempest is upon you. Nevertheless the men ratted hard to bring it to the on, on to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was temptuous against them. Wherefore they cried, unto the Lord, and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, and we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done it, it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah, and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Now let's go to Jonah 2, verses 1 and 10. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish belly. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. 
Now let's go to Jonah 3, and we're going to read the entire chapter. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an ex exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter it, a city, a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. From word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast nor herd nor flock taste anything. Let him not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry merrily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, and they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil, and he said that he would not do unto them, and he did not. Now let's go back to our scripture reading, Luke six thirty six. Say amen when you're there. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Because Jonah lacked mercy, he got eaten by a fish. And because the Lord allowed him to have a second chance, he was able to give Nineveh a second chance, which shows mercy. Now let's close that with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, help us to be merciful to others and help me to be merciful too. Be with us for the rest of the Sabbath. In Jesus' name.